Hi and welcome back everyone to another episode of Gaming with Jason. Today I'm going to talk about the European Doctrine and how to play it properly. I think a lot of players are using the European Doctrine wrong, so stay tuned to the end so you don't miss any important information. When I first started playing the European Doctrine, I noticed that it was speed based, but that was a surface level observation. The European Doctrine, if used properly, could be the most powerful doctrine in the entire game. Each doctrine has a specific set of units that are native and designed for that specific doctrine. When you don't use a doctrine properly, you're not getting the full potential out of the country you're playing or the doctrine in which you're using. The first unit that I would like to bring to your attention is the mechanized infantry. If you've ever tried to use a unit in the Western or Eastern Doctrine, you'd probably say that it was crap and wasn't worth the research. In the European Doctrine, the mechanized infantry is probably the most essential unit when countering the Eastern and Western Doctrines. The mechanized infantry gets a 20% boost in infantry attack, taking it from a 4 attack at a level 3 compared to a 6 attack at a level 3 which is better than infantry which only gives you a 4 attack at level 3. The mechanized infantry isn't just good against infantry it's comparable to a battle tank in damage. A level 3 tank will do 9 damage versus the 7 damage for a mechanized infantry or 2 damage from a motorized infantry. In a way, this unit is an optimal unit for the European Doctrine all over all other uh, infantry units. The mechanized infantry is so much better in the European Doctrine, it may be the only land unit you need if you get your air units right. Uh, speaking of air units, another important note about the mechanized infantry is that it starts with a 1.3 defense against air units versus the 0.3 defense given by the motorized infantry. In the European Doctrine, if used properly, the mechanized infantry costs less than a tank and is almost as powerful as a tank. The second unit I would like to bring your attention to is the tank destroyer. In the European Doctrine, the tank destroyer gets another 3 hit points on top of a 5% boost in armor attack damage, which gives one extra hit point. In a game where every point matters between survival and defeat, we've got to take it where we can get it. The tank destroyer stacked with mechanized infantry is virtually unstoppable against both the western and eastern doctrines. The third unit, and I think is almost as important as the mech, uh, this unit would be the strike fighter. The strike fighter gives you a 20% hit point bonus, taking you from 20 to 24 hit points. Just take a moment to fathom that. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, welcome back. I want to give you some honorable mentions. The first is the main battle tank, which gets an additional uh, hit point against infantry. The mobile artillery gets an additional 0.5 attack against infantry and four additional hit points. And the mobile anti-air, which receives an additional attack point against helicopters, which this would be really good as a counter to both the Western and eastern uh, to the western attack helicopter and to the eastern gunship helicopter. Now that you understand the important units within the doctrine, I will also share with you how I've learned to play with success. You know, I think a lot of players don't consider the independent variables that are included in the terrain, myself included. You know, Europe is large, but it's also compact with a lot of countries. You know, unfortunately for, fortunately for me, most of these players tend to use the uh, either the main battle tank and infantry, and when they use that against me, I can usually win with minimal losses because of the advantages I get from mech and and tank destroyer supported by strikers. If a player did get smart and start using my strategy, there are still ways to avoid a stalemate. I would recommend a mix of tanks 
and tank destroyers with mech. For instance, if I were going against infantry and tanks, I would use three tank destroyers with seven uh, mech uh, supported by a full strike wing. This allows you to get into a battle quickly for a quick win. And if someone decided to go up against my strategy, let's say they wanted to do the same thing that I was doing, then the way that you would counter it would be three tank destroyers, two main battle tanks, followed by five mech, a strike wing, and air superiority fighters. Now, if you get to that point and they uh, have matched you uh, unit for unit, level for level, then it just becomes a battle of uh, activity and wits. I hope this helped you understand the European doctrine so much better. And if you made it this far, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you'd like to even share this with your friends, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. And now I'm going to be doing regular videos and a regular schedule, which I intend on uploading every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, my intent is to do it at noon. Now, I may upload it to make sure that I keep my schedule, but I may have to make a few modifications. Maybe I missed an edit, or I need to add a thumbnail, or I need to, to adjust it a little bit better. So, just understand for the first couple days after I release one, that I do modify the video a couple of times if I feel that it, I, I missed it just a little bit. So, again, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.